So I have question number one. It's were, the, were questions grouped by domain in example coding, compliance, legal, or were the questions randomized? When I took the test in 2008, it was completely randomized. We went from coding to compliance, back and forth to how a record should be set up so that, that it is all over, for lack of better words, all over the board when you're taking the test. When you're taking the study guide and you're, you're studying through the study guide, I would suggest you understand the concept, not the question. It's because they're not going to ask you the same questions for compliance, so they're not going to ask you the same questions. But if you understand the question as far as what each answer means, you're going to have a better chance at understanding when the question comes on the test. I have question number two. Um, were there specific cases, laws, et cetera, re reference that we should focus on? Um, I would focus on all of them because every test is going to be different. Um, just like she said, go through your study guide. If you understand the question, move on to the next. Um, things that you have to stop and think about, go back and look through your study guides and your books and then r go over it again and then move on. I have question number three. Uh, the question is, were there specific dates referenced on the test, for example, 1965 Medicare implementation, 2003 for HIPAA uh, compliance, and uh, 1996, again, HIPAA effective date? Uh, the answer would definitely be yes. Um, and to back up uh, what number one said, the test that I took, uh, which was just a few months ago, was indeed randomized. Uh, each category was randomized. It was all over the board. And when it came to specific um, case law and dates that are, were referenced, uh, all of these dates were included uh, up to and including the High Tech Act, um, uh, as well as uh, Affordable Care Act, ARRA. Uh, all of these have had a, a tremendous impact on HIT just about in every domain you can imagine. Um, again, every test is different. And at least uh, from the standpoint of what I took, it was very definitely randomized. There were not sections. Um, however, when you study uh, your, your PRG manual and anything else that you might want to uh, pull into the mix, uh, they will be sectionized, and that's for your purpose. That's for your use. Because when you take your simulated tests, if you happen to be low on a section, then you know to focus on that section. I had question number four. Did the st statistic questions provide the formulas or do these need to be memorized? From what I can remember, they provided them um, as you needed them. And <clears throat> they gave you like a little dry race board type to kind of write stuff down with. Um, and as they said, I mean, it was just all over the board. Um, and myself, I kind of focused on what I knew I was weakest in, which is kind of funny, because now I'm a privacy officer and I figured that HIPAA was one of my weak points. <laughs> uh, but when I took my test, because I focused more on HIPAA than I did some of the others, I did score higher in that area when I made it, but they were, they provided me the formulas when I went through. I got question number five. Should we expect hardware questions or troubleshooting questions in the information technology section? I don't believe I had that many IT questions. I had more CPT. And that was something I was not good at. <laughs> we didn't have a good grasp of it. It was just, we'd done more ICD-9, so. And a few long-term questions, that's what I do, is long-term care. But IT is just normal stuff. I mean, whatever the health information book probably is teaching you how to like the how they keep them in order. What is the digits? <laughs> I can't even think of what it's called. Terminal digit. Terminal digit. So, but yeah, we actually use that too where I work. So, but any kind of studying, it's all over the board. I had number six. It's, is there something you wish you'd studied more? Is there a particular topic you recommend reviewing in greater detail? I went and bought the AHIMA 
study guide in preparing for my RHIT. I like it had a lot of good things in it. The one thing that I would recommend whether you decide to go with the HEMA's guide or another because I did purchase another one for comparison um, is to read the very beginning directions. It tells you how they want you to code the inpatient claims and how they want you to code the outpatient claims. It gives you examples of some of the more um, familiar drugs and what they are used for because those are some questions that do come up on uh, one or two or maybe even all of the RHIT exams just in sometimes there's more of them on one exam than the next. I do recall that they had asked about, okay, this this patient is on Dilaudid. What it what could that be an indication that they ha might have, or that diagnosis would be? So as long if you're studying and reading those pre directions that are before you actually begin to do the exercises in there, it gives you some good tips, things to remember, some medical terminology, what they're looking for on inpatient versus outpatient coding. Um, as far as is there something I wish I'd studied more, I would probably recommend, um, for me, it was the, the coding aspect of it because it's not, um, like Joni was saying, the CPT codes. It's when, when they're asking for a CPT code, they're not asking for the little four-digit CPT DX. They're, they're asking for the five-digit CPT code for that procedure that was done. So you need to recognize that and know the difference when they're asking for a procedure code, um, what a PPDX is, which is a primary principal diagnosis, because that's the way it's gonna be listed on a test. They're just gonna put PPDX, DX, DX, PP, you know, whatever. And, and modifiers, Mod oh, modifier. <laughs> Joanne reminded me of modifiers. Um, those um, they did list out for you. You had the option, um, they'll have a drop down box a lot of times where it'll have like um, cardiac cath right side, cardiac cath left side, or something to that effect. And you have to choose which one is the appropriate one with a modifier on it at times. So for me, the best thing I can say is make sure you read the pre instructions of what they're looking for when they're asking you the questions, whether inpatient, outpatient, review the terminology that they provide for you and the, the drugs that they're wanting you to be more familiar with, and then coding. I have question number seven. What study material do you recommend? I personally prefer the AHIMA RHIT study guide over the PRG. But speaking with a lot of people that I graduated with who passed the test, they absolutely love the PRG. So I think it's just personal reference. And I also use the John's book, mm -hmm. um, which I bought uh, from Amazon for like $2. So it was like an older model. And actually, my AHIMA study guide was like a 2010. I took the test in 2012. And I could relate to like some of the questions that were in the AHIMA study guide were on my test. I do recall that much. So um, a lot of people that I talked to love the PRG. We had it in class. I used it then, so I wanted something else to um, study by. So I got the AHIMA and John's. I highly recommend John's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going back to, I think it was question about the statistics. I did not hardly have any statistics on my test. Maybe one or two hardly any acronyms at all. That was surprising to me because <laughs> we studied that quite a bit. Hardly any on my test, but each, everybody's test is different. The AHIMA book, I think, did you use the AHIMA book? I actually used both the one that we were had to get in class and I used the AHIMA book and before my test, each, every other day I would take either the test from the AHIMA book or the one from the PRG book. But I would switch back and forth that way. I had more for myself. I could, you know, grasp the concept, so to speak. And like I said, I spent more time on the two areas that I thought were my weakest, which were HIPAA and coding, and now I'm in actually in HIPAA. So. The John's lady actually 
was done part of the test, like a consult. So I figured if, you know, if she was doing the book and then doing the AHEMA thing, then they're going to have the questions more geared how she does. But John's book's really good. It has a lot more information. The thing I liked about the AHEMA study guide, and I did this even with my RHIA test, I took the study guide, and in the back when you miss the question or when you're looking at the questions, it gives you the page number of the book that it came out of. Go to that page, go to that section, and read that section. Understand those, the sections. I finished both of my tests very early because I, I, you know, I researched everything. I probably memorized the book. Mm -hmm. My husband thinks you know, that, that I, I finished the test in an hour and a half, and I only missed like five. But I went back and I studied every section. Even I'm a, a person that has to write everything. So I rewrote pretty much every book. But that helped me because I knew where it was coming from. And I knew, again, the concept of what the question was. Not necessarily the question, but what it was asking. And then you read everything under that. And that helps you understand when, when the questions come. Because the questions come different. How they ask this question in the study guide is not going to be the way they ask you the question in the, the test. And so you just, again, if I can push anything, it's the concept. Understand that and understand it's book knowledge. If you're already working in the HIM field, it's book knowledge. Remember that because when you get out into the real world, it's not always the way the book says to do it. But when you're being tested, it's tested on book knowledge. That's the, one of the best things I can tell you to remember. One of the things I noticed about the, the questions on, on my test were that they were all written at, at what we call the application level. Uh, and that's the whole reason why uh, you, they provide you with the scenarios for the coding and they provide you with the, uh, the formulas for the statistics. It's not, they don't want to know what you've memorized. They want to know if you can recognize it and use it to actually solve a scenario. So my advice would be exactly the same as hers. I would, would strive to, to understand the concept behind uh, what they're asking, the question behind the question, if you want to look at it that way. Um, I too uh, used not only the PRG that uh, was required for, for the review class, but also the AHEMA manual. Uh, they both are written from slightly different perspectives. Uh, I didn't notice any of the questions from either manual actually verbatim on the test, but virtually every area and domain certainly was represented among the randomized questions that, that I took on the test. Um, I think um, uh, Ms. Miller said that I'm the most recent test taker here, so uh, that would have been uh, the middle part of October, so that's the most recent edition of the RHIT, and I can totally vouch for um, my panelists' um, observations that the questions are really, really all over the board. And take it as soon as you graduate. No yes, gaps. <laughs> absolutely. Just, you got all that in there, just get it out and get done with it. Move on.